Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. Today we're testing the 200 grain Nosler Acubond. This test arose out of a question posed to us by a viewer a while back. Which would be prefer, the Nosler Acubond or the Federal Terminal Ascent? We decided the only way to answer the question would be to get our hands on some Federal Terminal Ascents and some Nosler Acubonds in the same diameter and the same grain weight and pit them head to head on an even playing field. Same rifle, same powder charge, same ambient conditions, and after about six months, we've finally been able to source the components and make it happen. Today we'll be presenting our usual format on the Nosler Acubond, and in a separate video that we'll release soon, we'll be testing the Federal Terminal Ascent. We'll then release a third video that compares the results from both rounds. But back to today's topic, the Acubond is a bonded core bullet designed for use in medium to large game. It uses a proprietary bonding process that helps to eliminate voids in the bullet's core, which help promote even consistent expansion. Today we've got the 200 grain offering loaded up for our 300 wind mag on a pretty stiff charge of ramshot magnum. When coupled with our 26 inch barrel on our Bergara B14 HMR, should be producing just a little bit over 3000 feet per second. We've been looking forward to doing this test for some time, and we're very excited to see how the 200 grain Nosler Acubon is going to perform. So let's get started. You ready, homie? Yeah, I'm ready, homie. Ready to watch these fucking uh, Aki bombs smoke your uh, terminal scents? Uh, we'll see about that. Yeah? I have full faith in federal. Do you? Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm going Nosler on this one. America's ammunition manufacturer. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think JLo's up to? <laughs> Probably just celebrating life. Good for her. Yeah. She deserves it. Fuck yeah, she does. It's a hard working woman right there. Yeah, she got the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Did she really? No, but she should. I believe it. Yeah. What do you think? Saw it hit? Uh, all I saw was missed, so I think you missed. But Sierra missed, does it miss? It hits the spot. True. Ready for this, broski? Oh, I'm ready. Been ready. Would you say you were born ready? No, I, I came <laughs> ready after the fact. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe a couple weeks ago I just got ready. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, they issued it to me at CIF. Oh, yeah. You call it CIF? Yep. That's weak. Sif. Sif? One word, Sif. The sound that came off of that. Man, that thing rocks you. We're talking about the uh, original, right? Yeah, the original one. The fucking new one's terrible. Yeah, the remake's just not the same. No. I think they had North Korea made. Didn't they change, like, that shit in the movie or something? Yeah, it was originally supposed to be China, but China had an issue with that. I'm sure they did. Anyway, it's going to be China over North Korea. Yeah. I think we might have should brought some uh, sunscreen out today. Yeah, probably should have. You ready for this, bro? Yeah, send it. You know, they call me the one hit wonder. The one hit wonder? Why do they call you that? Oh. 
That's why. All right, bro, this one's for the money. Hell yeah, take us home. Don't choke. <coughs> I choked. Oh, shit. You feel that wind die down a tiny bit? Oh, just to see here. Good hit. Solid hit. Testing complete, let's look at some bullets. Overall, very impressive results. We have fantastic mushrooming distributed evenly at all ranges fired. Of course, it's good to keep in mind that these were exposed to a massive amount of heat and pressure. Chronographed velocity was just a little bit over 3,000 feet per second, pretty close to what we had been projecting. At the 100, we have very even expansion. The jacket and core peeled back evenly over the shank on all sides, and we can see that it expanded just a hair past the base of the bullet. At 200, again, we're looking at some pretty wicked expansion. This projectile didn't expand as evenly, but overall ended up being wider, and one of the pedals did fold back over the base, which I think must have been a result of the bullet starting to tumble. The 300 has good expansion as well, not as even as the 100, and it didn't peel back quite as far due to the round beginning to decelerate at range. At the 400, we have beautiful even expansion. Similar to the three, though we can see that it's ending further up the shank, which is not a cause for concern. It's just interesting when comparing all the ranges to actually be able to see how the difference in velocity impacts the expansion. And finally, at the 500 mark, we have a pretty cool swirling pattern in the lead with good expansion and a little bit of fuzz from one of our towel baffles. Moving on to our graphs, we have individual expansion for every range exceeding two times the original size of the projectile. This gives us overall average expansion of 2.39 times the original size, which is very impressive. Weight retention is fairly evenly distributed, and at the closer ranges, the projectile lost a bit more weight, and further out, it retained more weight, as there was less expansion. Average weight retention was 78.5%. And just above 75% is a figure I'm very happy with for a bonded core bullet. Standard deviations for expansion and weight retention are both very low. This isn't the best expansion we've ever tested. The Norma Oryxes we tested in 300 Win Mag had expansion damn near three times the original size, but they were 20 grains lighter and going a good 100 FPS faster. Found the Accur Bond to be a bit more accurate round compared to the Oryx. Past about three to 400 yards, the Oryx's patterning really started to open up. We do have some Norma Bond Strikes loaded up for testing, and I'm really interested to see how they perform, as they have a more modern design with a Spitzer profile and boat tail, as compared to the Oryx's round nose and flat base. That said, so far the AccuBond is one of my favorite bonded core bullets that we've tested, as I've found it to expand reliably and evenly, while at the same time delivering very good accuracy at every range we've tested it to. I think this bullet would be a fantastic choice for any medium to large game, Certainly anything you run into in the North American continent, with perhaps the exception being Sasquatch. I'd happily take this bullet hunting any day, and if you're in the market for a premium quality hunting bullet and don't mind shelling out the cash, the AccuBond is a fantastic option. This is the second time we've tested the AccuBomb on the channel, the first being in our 270 Win short mag, and I'm just as impressed now as I was then. Now the 300 Win mag and the 270 Wisdom are both relatively high velocity cartridges, so we haven't tested this bullet in any lower velocity chamberings, but we are planning to run it through some more intermediate cartridges, such as the 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, and I think we may be able to run it in a 6 mil arc as well. We've also got the 200 grain Federal Terminal Ascent coming up soon, and it's going to be interesting to see whether or not it's able to unseat the AccuBond as my favorite bonded core bullet. And if you'd like to see these bullets and more going head to head, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay apprised of what's going on here on the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.